My name is Flame, and Outlaw Rogue has changed my perspective on what mythics to do without Outlaw Rogue. None. Hello you nerds! And yes, today I will be giving you a basic rundown on how to play Outlaw in Raids and Mythic Plus. Talents, rotation, gear, you name it, you should have everything here to get you started on Outlaw right now. Quick disclaimer, Outlaw and Reload the Bones specifically are very nuanced and have a lot of flavors to them that we can discuss and debate for possibly hours. They take into consideration your own character stats, what encounter you have, what the future encounter is and how your general run will go in the dungeon or in the raid. So I will be keeping that out of the video. I'm more interested in providing you with the basic information of how to start doing really good with Outlaw in raids and dungeons. And that simply doesn't mean that everything that you will learn in this video will be everything there is to learn about Outlaw. On with the show! The talent build for Outlaw is almost interchangeable between the content you do, with one or two options you can swap out. On the first row you have Quick Draw, making your pistol shot procs generate an additional combo point and dealing 50% increased damage. This is the best DPS option on the row that will not swap out unless Blizzard buffs or nerfs this row in any way. Second row, again, by far the best choice is Acrobatic Strikes, and this talent has multiple applications. It's one of the talents that makes Outlaw shine in certain situations, and it's not as straightforward at first glance. It increases the range of your melee attacks by 3 yards. One application, and probably the easiest to figure out, is that you can stick to your target better and stay outside certain damage puddles on the ground that would otherwise prevent you from doing any sort of damage. One example would be the AoE of the Shark Puncher boss in Freehold. Another application and possibly the best one is that it affects Blade Flurry. Blade Flurry makes your single target attacks hit around you in a circle-like fashion. Widen that circle by 3 yards will increase its AoE by a lot more than 3 yards would initially make us believe. Although this row would initially seem to be a utility row, Acrobatic Strikes could very well be perceived as a damage boosting talent provided you take advantage of it. And the way the BFA encounters are currently set up as, it's definitely a DPS talent. Third row, Vigor, is the general pick you want for all situations. Outlaw has a tendency to feel energy starved once you roll the bones too many times with bad buffs, Plus, it helps with overcapping energy when using adrenaline rush. Essentially, it's a quality of life talent that not only gives you a lot more room for error, but lets you set up your rotation more efficiently since your energy pool is a more flexible resource to juggle. Level 60 talents are purely survival based. The one that shines out the most is Cheat Death. Aaron's stomach just doesn't have the numbers to be viable in any situation and elusiveness is definitely an option to consider. The advantage of cheat death is that it can compensate if you are starting off with rogue or simply are unfamiliar with the encounter, either it's a progression fight or the encounter is new for you as a melee DPSer. More so than this, it actually lets you soak mechanics once you do know the encounter and your raid leader can accommodate this into the group strategy. The level 75 tier has very little applications in PvE. The most you'll ever do is with Prey on the weak on ads that can be stunned. But you'll have to use this on priority targets which will never be bosses. Level 90 tier take alacrity always. Loaded dice is not that good since getting 2 buffs is statistically not that hard to do. And the damage you would sacrifice for that is not warranted. Alacrity is a buff you would more than likely keep up 100% of the time, at least for the time you are consistently in combat. Slice and Dice was probably intended to replace the frustrating component of Roll of the Bones, but with its current iteration it's worse than not picking any talent because the DPS output of Slice and Dice is kind of equivalent to getting 100% bad rolls on Roll the Bones. I know old combat rogues miss this spell since it was another thing to maintain and keep track of. But unless it received a significant buff in the future, it's right now a horrible choice. 
The last row is unfortunately the only row you can currently make an impactful choice on your builds. The general purpose talent and the best for single target at the moment is Blade Rush. It helps in AoE situations since it has a nice synergy with Blade Flurry, plus it adds something new to the rotation. The other option to take is Dancing Steel. Dancing Steel is pretty much the go-to for any non-strict single target encounters if you want the extra damage. And also a must in Mythic Dungeons. It has a strong synergy with a specific Azerite trait that we will discuss shortly. You cannot go wrong with either of them. Play with both and see what you like best. But as a general rule, take Blade Furry for fights like Grong and Mechatork. And Dancing Blade for everything else provided you have said Azerite trait. Killing Spree is a bit trickier to use. For me, it seems really close to Blade Rush, but simming isn't everything. Killing Spree can easily get you to cap and waste energy. I'm not saying it's not an option, a lot of mythic rogues use it for opulence, but that has some undertones I don't go over into what is mainly supposed to be a basic guide. If you aren't bothered too much about stats and the very best item to equip on your character, then simply pick the highest high level gear or the one with the most crit and you should be good to go. There is a general accepted stat weight, but that will always change as your character progresses. To keep up with that, you will need to sim yourself and see what is better. The easiest way to sim is to go to raidbots.com. As an example, I have simmed myself for both single target and AoE situations, and the difference is not that big. Agility is still king, making eye level the best way to gear, followed by crit and versatility with haste very very close after. Azerite traits and trinkets will also change some of the secondary stats and we will get to those right now. Starting off with the trinkets, we can actually visit websites such as bloodmallet.com and herodamage.com, the latter being a bit more accurate when it comes to rogues, and we can see some graphs that simulate the strength of certain trinkets overall, specifically for single target scenarios in this case. If you are willing to do it, you can opt for getting the trinkets that these sim indicate, and that's on you, and perfectly fine. In general, any trinket with a crit proc will be very good. As long as it's not mastery, which seems to be our worst stat, you should be fine with most trinkets. But if I had to recommend you go for some trinkets, being single target or AoE, I would recommend going for 3 of them. Deadeye Spyglass is the most used out of all it seems by top rogues that raid mythic Dazara lore and also rogues that push super high keys in mythic plus. It's not that difficult to see why, it's a nice crit boost. You get this from Toldegore and seeing as how my key gave me back to back Toldegores 3 times and still no trinket, you might have to farm it for a bit. Ok ok, I know you will have to farm it a lot, but hey, you can target farm it at least. And I shouldn't tell you how indispensable Outlaw Rogue is for Toll the Gore. Kimball's Razor Claw is another good trinket for raiding, especially in situations where you can be behind the boss, which should pretty much be all situations, and you get the 50% leech, which will add up with the grand melee buff to provide some decent sustain for that unavoidable raid damage. Getting this is pretty straightforward, it drops from the conclave which is a boss you will do anyway if you are raiding. And if you are doing mythic plus and have the possibility, replace Kimbles with Harland's loaded dice that drops from freehold. Although it has a mastery proc, you can also get crit and haste and it's generally better than Kimbles since mythics are a bit more chaotic when it comes to positioning. The last two trinkets are not exclusive to their respective content, so you can still use Harland's Loaded Dice in raids. Moving on to Azerite traits, we will talk about a few that really stand out and seem to be good for both raiding and mythic dungeons, which is a plus. Keep in mind that you can opt for certain niche traits and stacking them in a certain number can even change a talent. Again, we can look at some sims to get an understanding of some of these traits. But better than this, always try to sim yourself and see what combination of traits is best for what situation, which will give very individual results. The main trait you still want to get and stack 3 times is Deadshot, a pretty straightforward trait that makes your pistol shot hit like a truck. Remember that one trait I said works amazing with Dancing Blade? 
You want to have one keep your wits about you in any fight where you have more than one target. If you are fighting purely one target like Mecha Torque, then you won't actually benefit from it. Clearly this is the best trait for Mythic Plus and all but maybe two bosses in battle for the Zara lore. Keep at least one ace up your sleeve. You can stack this one, but I would recommend simming to see how much it's worth stacking because stacking only will add the flat damage component and not the proc chance. It's worth mentioning that if you stack ace up your sleeve two or three times, then getting deeper stratagem as a talent might be better. Sim before making that decision though. Another trait that would be good to have one copy of is Brigand's Blitz. Multiple copies of this will incur a diminishing return as such, more than one is not ideal. If you still have options left, punch in Treacherous Covenant since that's a trait that will always be good. For secondary traits, aim in this order for Overwhelming Power, Gut Ripper and Heed My Call. Before going into the actual rotation and priority, let's first talk about Roll the Bones and the buffs it provides. To quickly relieve some people that come from the Legion version of Roll the Bones, don't worry, it's much much better in BFA. Now, when you roll the bones you get a random buff with a smaller chance to get 2 random buffs and 1% chance to get 5 random buffs. Normally, you would want to keep rolling for 2 buffs, whatever they end up to be. However, you can stop at one buff if that buff is Ruthless Precision or Grand Melee. Once you have the Deadshot as right trait or the Ace Up Your Sleeve trait, Grand Melee will be a bad buff on its own, meaning you either keep Ruthless Precision or roll until you get two buffs. There is no point in the rolling process where you should stop because you simply got bad rolls and you want to use your combo points on Dispatch instead. Keep rolling, over the course of a fight it's better for your DPS. Getting 2 buffs has a 19% chance of occurrence meaning almost 1 in 5 rolls will get you 2 buffs. I will be talking about one more buff since we can be here all day at this rate and that buff is Broadside. This buff will make your combo generating abilities generate one additional combo point. When you have and want to maintain this, make sure not to waste combo points by casting Sinister Strike or Pistol Shot at 4 combo points. The same logic will be applied to the Pistol Shot proc. Once you have 4 combo points, spend them immediately because casting another Sinister Strike could override your current Pistol Shot proc, losing you overall damage and casting Pistol Shot instead wastes a combo point, again losing you damage in the long run. With this out of the way, let's talk about the opener. The opener for Outlaw Rogues is a bit funny. What you want to do is cast Adrenaline Rush about 1 second before the pull and then instantly stealth. Use Ambush, then Vanish, then Ambush again. You do this because Ambush generates 2 combo points instead of 1 and you use this only when you know for sure you won't need Vanish in the next few minutes. All of the cooldowns that you have will be cast as soon as they become available and you don't need to pair them up with anything. Killing Spree, Adrenaline Rush and Blade Rush all need to be cast on cooldown and make sure not to cap on energy. When this is good for you depends on how much haste you have since haste dictates energy regeneration. If you want to use Vanish as a DPS cooldown so you can ambush for 2 points, make sure to cast it when you have 60 or more energy. The actual rotation is very simple for Outlaw. You build combo points with the following priority. Pistol shot with a proc, then ambush, then sinister strike. You spend combo points with the following priority from highest to lowest once you have 5 combo points or 4 if you have the broadside buff or the pistol shot proc. Refresh roll the bones at 3 seconds or less. Cast between the eyes if you have the ace up your sleeve or dead shot as right traits, being careful not to waste a dead shot buff. Only after will you re-roll the buffs following the above mentioned guideline. After that, cast between the eyes if you have ruthless precision buff from roll the bones. And last on the list is dispatch. When fighting more than one target, activate blade furry and do the same thing. If you have Killing Spree or Blade Rush, pair them with Blade Flurry always. 
Since a lot of the conditions for a proper rotation are based off of an RNG component, there is no order of buttons I can tell you to press to be efficient. Outlaw is about managing your buffs, your energy, your combo points and your encounter. Practice this until you master them and you will quickly find yourself out DPSing less dedicated players by a huge margin. Unless you are using raid bots to sim all possible enchant combinations, you should aim to get crit enchants for rings with crit gems for sockets. You can plug in an agility gem if you have the cash. Same goes for food. Get any feast if possible and if not, then the highest crit food you have. Get the agility flask and agility battle potion for your alchemical needs. Weapon enchants is where you have some liberty. Listening to some top progs in the community and also simming myself, I would recommend you take Gale Force Striking Enchant on one weapon, with either a Crit Enchant on the other or a Versatility Enchant. If you are interested in other fast-paced melee DPS packs, you can go check our Fury Warrior and Havoc Demon Hunter guides that are already up on our channel. The guides will teach you everything that you need to know to play Fury and Havoc right now in raids, talents, gear, rotation, you name it. Also, a big shout out to our patrons for supporting our channel and giving us the possibility of doing higher quality videos. Thank you very much. If you're also interested in supporting us a bit more and also getting some perks along the way, check our Patreon page right down in the description. It's definitely not required but very much appreciated. Follow us on Twitter or Facebook to get the latest scoops on our livestream and future projects. Thanks for watching the video, you take care and I'll see you in the next one.